Hello, dear family. So wonderful to be here with you. Let me just check the screen. <clears throat> okay, awesome. All right, so welcome, welcome to these three keys to accessing freedom and vitality with healthy boundaries in your life. Uh, this is going to be a both a healing experience and an awakening and awareness experience. We're going to start with a little guided visualization into the womb space. And then I'll talk about more of the three keys to accessing this level of the most important keys to creating boundaries in your life so that, yeah, you are shifting into vitality uh, and and freedom this spring. I know this time of year, anytime we're moving into transitions, it can really feel, uh, yeah, it, it can feel like we're bringing part of a uh, the past with us. And especially in the winter, we are still working with shadow work and witnessing the parts of ourselves that need to uh, release and cleanse and uh, be witnessed and held space for while also holding space for this energy of blooming and vitality. And so this is such an important time to recognize when our shadows or excuse me when our boundaries are not being honored when we uh look at how is our life shifting how is our life changing along with this change of seasons along with this um, change of time and uh how can we adjust our life in order to create this uh, deeper sense of vitality and freedom so I'm going to give a moment for more people to come on into this space. And if you are here, please put your name into this space and share where it is you are coming from. <clears throat> and for those who do know me, uh, welcome back <laughs> to this space. And for those who maybe have not uh, had a session with me or worked with me before or are new to the space, then welcome. My name is Ashley Seymour and I have been guiding women into power. <laughs> Hi, Danica. Um, oh, amazing. Hi, Peggy. Wonderful. Um, yeah, so I've been guiding women into the, their own power, into their authentic self, their soul gifts, priestess lineage, and aligned sovereign leadership now for about four years. And I'm a Holy Fire Reiki master. Most of my practices are steeped and deep ceremony. And a lot of the ceremonial practices that I work with have been uncovered through working within the akashic records working with the ascended masters that are in my uh, field that support me and mentor me uh, and my main mission here really right now on this earth is to be a channel for divine feminine awakening and supporting other women into coming into their own power and i'm also a mother of two beautiful daughters and it's such an honor to be able to uh, get to support these two beautiful souls uh, into their own divine feminine as well. So let's start with our uh, visualization experience uh, to really connect into what's going on with your womb, with your energy, and just tuning into what's present for you right now, because that will bring a lot more context to what we're going to talk about. It'll make a lot more sense as I'm speaking to understand what is your energetic imprint stepping into this space and stepping into this um, this healing and this uh, masterclass. So if it's possible, if you're driving or doing something else, then definitely keep your eyes open and focus on what you need to be doing. But if you are in a place where you're grounded, you don't have to focus on children or something else, then I really invite you to close your eyes so you can actually tune into uh, this visualization that we're about to dive into and experience. And again, welcome if you're just showing up. So happy to have you here. Feel free to put your name into the comment space and share where you're coming in from so we continue to build 
build this collective community together. <clears throat> okay. So with this visualization, make yourself comfortable, let your eyes close again as if possible, and let's dive in. So with your eyes closed, go ahead and now tune into your womb space, which is your sacral chakra, swadhisthana chakra, and it's this uh, sacred it sits really in the center of your sacral bowl uh, in your pelvis and is literally at the core of your uterus uh, is really where the center of this chakra center is and for women it's directly related to the womb the uterus and even if you are a woman and don't have your uterus you can still do this practice. You're still connecting into this powerful, creative, expansive, energetic space. Although there's parts of ourselves that are physical, there's still parts of ourselves that we, we are spiritual beings. And so that energy that's contained in the womb is still there, even if the physical womb is not. So with your eyes closed, taking a deep breath into the center of your womb, into the center of your sacral, and actually feel your lower abdomen expanding why to tune into that space and as you exhale letting your lower abdomen deflate and feeling like you can contract your lower abdomen in just slightly so that you feel this tensing of your muscles and you're just bringing this area of your body alive waking her up <laughs> inhaling lower abdomen expands you can almost feel as if your breath is also expanding into your lower back expanding in all directions and as you exhale feel the lower belly the lower abdomen contract in as you anchor your attention your awareness into the center the core of your womb Let's do that a couple more times together, slowing down the mind and coming into the body. Inhale, lower abdomen, your womb space expands in front to the sides and behind you. And as you exhale, slowly contract in, focusing on the center of your womb. One more time. Inhaling and exhaling. Now, if there's any other tension in your body, go ahead, unravel it now. Release any gripping of the legs, your neck, your arms, hands, your jaw, so that you can shift deeper into this visualization. We're really going to see more of what's going on with your womb with your sacral. Now envision that the center of your womb, your sacral chakra, is this endless ocean of life force energy. And just noticing right now, as you look at the waters of this ocean, and you might be a more visual person or more a sensational person or both. You might feel what this ocean feels like more in your womb. You might be seeing it. Just tune in the best you can. And what does this ocean look like? Are there choppy, intense waves? Is it calm? Is it bright? Is it dark? Just even looking at how this the waters this endless ocean of life force energy, how it's feeling and how you're experiencing it at the center of your womb. And no judgment, this is just an opportunity to connect. It's much easier said than done to not judge our state right now, but just witnessing, just having so much gratitude for the opportunity to really tune in to the womb, to bring her into the space, to bring her into your presence, into your consciousness, welcoming connection, and just recognizing how are the waters of the womb. 
and radiating out from the central <clears throat> ocean, there's these flowing rivers flowing out in all directions. And there's rivers flowing out of the womb and there's rivers flowing to the center of the womb, right? The center of this endless ocean. And just recognize how many rivers are flowing out compared to how many rivers are flowing in. And what do they look like? Are there really big rivers flowing out? Are there really small rivers flowing out? Is there really large rivers flowing in or small rivers flowing in or maybe a mix? Are the rivers strong and vital or do they feel depleted, maybe even some dried up? Is there the sense of strength and clarity in the flow of these rivers or is there a sense of this force or depletion and weakness? You can also notice where most of the rivers are flowing in or out of. Is it like the front of your body, the front of this great vast ocean? Is it towards the back of you, your lower back or the sides? And most importantly, how does it feel? Does it feel revitalized and alive and energized? Or is this, there's sen this sense of depletion or disconnection or disempowerment? Again, just giving so much beautiful gratitude to your womb, all she does <laughs> to support you in coming into your power, in connection to yourself and understanding your desires, and just gratitude for this opportunity to connect to her and to heal just by simply bringing presence to her. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And as you exhale, breathe out, releasing down into your womb. And if it feels good after doing this healing experience to place your hands on your womb space and just give her some comfort and love for whatever you just experienced, feel free to do so. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and return. So if you've just joined in towards the end, we just completed a really powerful visualization of what's going on with your womb, the waters, uh, the uh, energy, the flow, the channels that are moving in and out of it. So if you just got to experience that, I would love for you to put in the chat uh, any description about your your sacred waters the visualization that you got of your womb how your central ocean was and how your rivers were flowing i'd love to talk about um the symbolism kind of the symbolism of what that means what that's what that could be potentially speaking about uh, so if you feel called to put that um, put some of what you experienced into the chat then we can talk a little bit about what that might mean and what it is you're experiencing and how your womb is talking to you so the element of the sacral chakra is i'm going to just can talk a little bit <laughs> if you'd like to put some stuff in the chat i'll i'll give space for that but i'm going to share a little bit about what was going on there uh with the sacral chakra the element is water and so it's such a powerful uh, practice to tune in. I like to call it to our inner waters of how the womb is, um, how it is experiencing its, uh, um, 
its flow of life force energy, its flow of um, where are we directing our power, our resources, our attention, and our desires. And when when we are not in a place of actually honoring ourself and our energy and our authentic expression, we tend to really deplete our inner waters. And this is where we, then we can start feeling really resentful, uh, drained, um, exhausted, just uninspired by life. Um, oftentimes not even understanding what it is we desire or what it is we want. And our senses also become uh, dull when the womb is not turned on and alive. It's like life doesn't have this luster to it, this shine, this vibrancy. And so it, it's really easy to continue going down the spiral of disconnecting from, uh, from what you truly uh, want and who you are. And so this is why <clears throat> tending to your inner waters and learning how to reclaim your power and strengthen the rivers, the flows, <clears throat> the flow of your uh, energy is only going to uh, benefit how you, well, one, how you set how you set boundaries is really how you're creating all of this um, but it's going to really sh change how you um, meet each moment from a place of authentic connection to your power <clears throat> because you can't really show up fully and authentically in any situation if we're depleted and disconnected from our authentic self <clears throat> we're going to agree to things that aren't in alignment we're going to speak things that aren't in alignment we're going to say yes to things that aren't in alignment we're going to say no to things that actually we might have should have said yes to uh, because there's this full disconnection to what it means to be you in your womb in your power and as the energy drains and depletes and you become more dull and numb uh, to life um, it's just kind of, yeah, this downward, downward spiral of further disconnection. And so this is why, uh, especially with boundaries and being in the sovereign priestess collective group with you divine woman, I felt it was really important to speak about boundaries around the relationship of the womb and <clears throat> how tending to the waters is so essential. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, another aspect to this is um, <clears throat> thinking about the actual channels that are flowing in and out of your womb. This is actually what's happening in your energy field. I see it all the time with women I'm working with. It's not just at your womb either. It's your entire body, your living energy system. And there are energy channels flowing out of you. That's how we psychically connect. It's how we emotionally connect. And it's a natural part of life. <clears throat> and when we engage with something, our energy connects to it. It's it's just inevitable. <laughs> if we were to completely disconnect from life, there would be this coldness. Uh, so it's it's very natural and it's important to energetically connect to life. But what happens is when we are energetically engaging with things that are actually not in alignment with our highest good, we are complete, we create these energetic connections that drain us. It means energy is flowing out. Like you might've seen that outward flow of river and it's flowing out and it's not returning. <clears throat> There's no healthy energetic return. It's just this gulping of your own energy and it might be to a person it might be to a situation uh, might be to thought patterns belief systems a traumatic experience from the past whatever it might be but that's that's energy flowing out of you and it's not returning <clears throat> And this is where we become depleted of life force energy. And then, so what boundaries do is boundaries create this space where it's like oh, that channel, that uh, energy flow, that's not serving my highest good. And so I'm going to set a boundary, reclaim my power back and shift my focus. I'm actually going to shift my focus and funnel my energy, that ocean, that infinite ocean of life force energy within you. I'm going to funnel that to a channel, to a river, uh, to a connection that actually does 
fill me up with life force and it actually does support my greatest good and the highest good of all uh, of all and so this is really that process of uh, creating boundaries and so it's this balance of this masculine and feminine i've talked about this a lot <laughs> on um, most classes is this balance of feminine and masculine and so at the womb center that water that we were just talking about the sacred endless water of ocean uh, your life force energy, it's meant to create life. And if we place that life force energy into things that do not serve our highest good, it is going to drain. And that's when we feel completely disconnected from ourselves. And so the flow of that water is the feminine. It's your life force energy. It's this creative force. It's your sacred sexual energy. It's what activates you, what turns you on. It's what you, how you understand your desires and um, what you want to engage with. And, um, and then the channel that's where you choose to channel that energy is that masculine right and we need a strong supportive masculine to allow the strength and the uh, power of your feminine to flow through those channels so really boundaries is such a uh, conversation of tuning into your feminine tuning into surrender what it is you need it's a deeply humbling process and then activating the masculine activating your throat to actually uh, honor yourself and step forward <clears throat> into uh, what it is you need to do to set your boundaries so that you can honor your energy flow. Okay, so real briefly, uh, boundaries. So as we've been discussing, creating boundaries are an essential part of stepping into your sovereignty and inner authority. There's no way around it. <laughs> I, this is why I love talking about boundaries because it is the most important, uh, it was the biggest life change for me <laughs> uh, many years ago of realizing that uh, if I do not set boundaries, I'm going to lose my sense of self entirely. And sometimes setting boundaries is really challenging, but in in, uh, overall, it's it is only serving your highest good and the highest good of the people around you because uh, you're choosing to honor the truth with inside of you and you living in that embodiment of your truth is an energetic vibration that gives a gives this um, uh, invitation for others to also live in that truth for others to also understand their boundaries and their needs. So without boundaries, your sense of self worth and power depletes. I'm going to say it again without boundaries your sense of self-worth and power depletes you know i even see even my children they're like three and <laughs> one and a half they have boundaries you know they don't verbally speak it but they they physically speak their boundaries and they're not conditioned to um to a, they're not at this point in their life where they're conditioned to please people or make somebody happy right they're just like no i i don't want that or like it's not comfortable or and they're not saying that but that's their body language and so it's just such a normal it's just innate in being human. We are in physical bodies. And so we have to, uh, we have to work with this physical reality <laughs> and, um, and actually uh, create certain boundaries that honor our energetic self, our spiritual self. And also we sometimes need to set very strong physical boundaries too. Um, but yeah, without these boundaries, we are telling ourselves if if we're telling ourselves this um like needing to people please or dishonoring our truth and what we value uh we are in essence saying you know i'm not worthy of actually honoring myself i'm not worthy of actually uh speaking what i need and i don't really respect myself enough to follow through with it there other people aren't really going to respect me to fall through it and it's just this uh spiral of just depletion and disconnection from power so yeah you need boundaries in both this 3d reality and your physical interactions and you also need energetic boundaries that protect you and empower you when interacting with energies in various levels of consciousness and other dimensions so i work a lot with talking with uh, my clients depending on what where they're at is uh, energetic boundaries especially with intuitive development psychic abilities work in the akashic records and especially ceremonial work so that's a whole nother level of uh energetic and spiritual boundaries when opening ourselves up to that type of energy as well 
Uh, so boundaries are useful in any relationship and interaction so that your values and your needs are honored. And uh, this does not mean that necessarily someone else or some situation is going to honor or value, <laughs> honor your values and your needs. So it's really this balance of um, standing in your self-worth, understanding your power, speaking your boundaries and your needs, and also recognizing that sometimes they're just, they're not going to be honored by someone or some situation. And that's when you have to make other, sometimes more major shifts in your life. Like, does that relationship really serve me if this person does not want to respect my boundaries? Or does this job really serve me if it's not respecting uh, my values and needs and so on? And that's more like kind of bigger life changes. And I see this happen oftentimes, especially when I, um, in beginning stages of working with clients, when they really start developing their connection to boundaries, big life changes do happen. Because as you start stepping into your self-worth and your power, you realize all of the ways you didn't honor your self-worth and power in your relationships and your family and your work and so on. And sometimes it can be like, whoa, there's, I was really not honoring myself. Um, and then on the other spectrum of it, uh, people who have been really shaping a life to honor themselves, sometimes you can get blindsided by being depleted, uninspired, and not connecting to your self-worth because we're constantly changing and evolving. <laughs> and who we were a year ago is so different than who you are now. And so we have to, even for someone who has been like myself and a lot of the women I do work with who do understand working with their boundaries, it takes a deep humbling to actually recognize, oh, where where am I and what has changed? What are my values now? Am I really fully honoring myself in this situation? And so it's not about where you're at in your journey with boundaries, no matter where you're at. We have to look at them <laughs> because we are constantly changing and need to look at, am I really honoring myself uh, in this situation so I can thrive and be in my sovereignty and be in my freedom? Uh, so there's many different situations where, yeah, you're going to need healthy boundaries, such as intimate relationships. I already mentioned this family work, public spaces, online spaces, psychic work, um, healing work, whatever it, it is. I think anything you engage with, there's some level of boundaries that are needed. And, you know, boundaries are, they're not this super um, rigid and, some are there's some boundaries you might have in life that are like that is just an always no like that's no thank you not doing that <laughs> that's not for me i don't want to put my energy into that i don't want to engage with that right and then there's some that are more malleable and can change and we'll talk about that um in a moment okay so let's go into this discussion now of the three um, keys that I kind of put together to talk about how to really support you in thinking about how to set your authentic boundaries right now, like moving forward from this call, stepping to this energy of spring, uh, just really three key points for you to focus on so that when you, uh, again, leave this masterclass, you're reflecting and really just tuning into what it is you need and how you can shift uh, your life so the first key is we've already mentioned this uh, I've mentioned this over and over and over uh, but it's you know your worthiness and this is just huge and why I talk about it because if you have a low level of self-worth you will not set your boundaries because it takes uh, it takes vulnerability because you have to speak your need which expressing your needs is a vulnerable thing it takes courage because sometimes it's uncomfortable and it's not what others want to hear and so there has to be this sense of i'm important enough i love myself enough that this matters for you to actually take that step to speak that boundary and you know we'll get into the next key which we'll talk about like well 
how do I even know what that, <laughs> that might be? How do I even know what that self-worth is or what it is I need or want or desire? Cause that's a big thing too. Is if we've been on this path of disconnecting from our life force energy, our desires, our wants, our needs, sometimes you just get to a point in your life where you just kind of let life move you, letting people make decisions for you. Cause you're really not even tuned in to what it is you want or desire. Or, um, yeah, you, you don't have your own inner authority and choice for yourself. Uh, and this is a, a just a really big sign that there's a dis disconnection to, especially the womb space, your power and uh, authentic boundaries. So coming back to worthiness. Uh, so we, we judge constantly about how much something is worth. I want you to start thinking about this in your day to day life of how much you are evaluating how worthy things are, right? You can say things like, oh, it's that's worth way more than that. Or that's definitely not worth taking all that time, right? Like, I just I don't think it's worth that much time. I'm not going to do it right. Like we're using this language worth all, like a lot. <laughs> and so it's a very, um, we think in this way, it is so much a part of our operating system as a society, as culture, and as a human nature of just thinking of worth and value that of course, we're going to judge ourselves the same whether consciously or not <laughs> like we are judging things around us about how much it's worth like we look also at prices like mm, is it worth that much right uh that's just that's just what we we do as humans and so we are inevitably talking about ourselves that way whether we're conscious of it or not is saying oh, am i worthy am i really worth that does that really matter? Is that really important? You know? Uh, and so, yeah, we measure our experiences and worth. And we also, yeah, place this judgment in ourselves. So counter to popular belief, <laughs> you are actually all, you are already worthy inherently and completely. There's nothing you need to prove. You came into this world absolutely pure divine light there's a part of you that's always one with divine always one with god always one with source that never leaves you and when you tune into that infinite space of love and beauty and joy within you you are connected into that infinite relationship of bliss of divinity, of light, and you are reminded that you are worthy and just as you are is absolutely enough. And we have all of these layers of traumas or feeling like we need to prove ourselves. And of course, yes, we can choose to accomplish goals. We can choose to push ourselves and change habits and of course be, you know, a better person and for ourselves and our loved ones. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, we want to evolve and grow. And uh, that's that's also innate in being human. We don't, Stagnancy is not healthy. We are meant to evolve and expand and grow. And it's also that brings joy and fun and um creativity into life and we want to test ourselves and our courage and you know of course so yes there is always room for growth but innately we are already worthy and so when you start tuning into that innate sense of worth you can you start actually shifting what how you speak your boundaries and what you accept really the key is is what you accept for yourself so i'll talk about that in a moment um so if you do not feel worthy you actually close yourself off to the abundance of life and accept lower vibrational situations and things it's just inevitable if your sense of self-worth is very low it's like down here and say like a high sense of self-worth is up here. This is the energetic frequency of situations in life that you're going to accept. Because anything up here, you're like, I'm just not worthy for that. How could I receive that? It's like, and you're down here saying, this is just the best that I possibly, I guess, can get. I guess I'm just gonna have to settle. Or um, 
how could it be really any better than this, right? Sometimes it's even like this low sense of self-worth and disables your ability to dream, to vision, to expand and to accept higher, higher realities. Uh, so, um, yeah, so how you're thinking of yourself and, you know, how you think about yourself and also how much guilt or shame that you're holding in your body. Um, and this will really bring your self worth low. And then also, do you feel, you know, the sense of, do I feel worthy enough to nourish and to love yourself, uh, and to take care of yourself. And so, uh, this oftentimes if there's lack of self worth, there's this feeling or need to, uh, perpetuate punishment or feeling like you need to suffer or that in order to even receive a little bit of what it is you want or desire, there has to be so much hard work to get it. Um, and so it really does this low self worth really, uh, <clears throat> stifles our ability to accept and shift into uh, higher relationships and giving our energy into uh, things that actually serve us. So again, how does this affect our boundaries? So when you have this lack of self-worth, you are energetically giving your energy, your life force energy to things, to people, and to situations that do not serve your highest good. You're saying yes to aspects of your relationship that are draining you, aspects of work, aspects of life, um, how you talk to yourself and you're giving your power over to those things that don't serve you. When you have a higher level of self-worth, you're saying, I do not accept that for myself. And I am now going to create a boundary around this aspect or this person, this aspect of a relationship or this person or um, this job or whatever it might be. It's like, I'm, I'm worth that. I'm going to say no and reclaim my power back from that person or that situation and thing. Okay. Um, so the second key here is to really turn on your desires <laughs> when your womb is depleted and kind of offline. It's, um, even knowing what it is you want or where to go or, um, what you want to create in life is there's just this low sense of drive and vitality. Uh, and so turning on your desires is a very important part in setting boundaries because without that you're there's really no baseline for you to navigate where you're going to reclaim your power from and where you actually want to put your power into okay so again think of it like those rivers from the beginning of this guided visualization when your powers uh, <clears throat> if you have if you don't really know what you want or what you're desiring, you're going to have a lot of outflow energy that's going to flow in directions of other people's desires, people in your life. They're going to make decisions for you um, at work. You're just going to kind of maybe accept whatever without making big decisions and uh, for yourself and your energy starts really flowing outward a lot in things that aren't really authentic for you. And there's this continued sense of depletion to yourself. And on the other hand, when you know your desires, it's like, oh, I actually, I don't want that. Knowing what you don't want is a very important <laughs> part of life and knowing what you do want is as well. Um, but when you know what you don't want, you can actually start reclaiming your power back from it. You can actually start calling that energy back. And that's, that's what the importance of desires is, is knowing what you desire, knowing what your needs are, knowing what turns you on and choosing to either tune into it, to engage with it, to put your energy towards it or to call your energy back from things that are not supporting you. And again, this is changing constantly. Things that maybe like turned you on and you really got excited about five years ago is probably so different than maybe what, what's important to you now and where you want to put energy into now. And this is why it's so important to connect to your boundaries. Um, over and over, especially shifting from seasons year to year around your birthdays <laughs> daily. It is just such an important practice. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you're feeling, um, depleted, you probably need to listen to yourself more intimately and understand what your needs are to uh, shift in your life. Uh, this energy of depletion is a direct connection that you're not, you're, uh, 
You're not slowing down enough to actually tune in to what fuels you. And so you have to slow down to call your power back. And slowing down doesn't mean you have to take a whole week to do nothing. <laughs> slowing down could be a half hour. It could be 20 minutes. It could be five minutes of just taking a moment to breathe like we did in the beginning. Tune into your womb. Tune into the waters there. How is your energy flowing? <laughs> How are the rivers flowing in and out of it? Like that simple is you slowing down and asking yourself, what do I need right now? Like, is what I'm engaging with actually supporting me? Again, just you could literally ask your womb that question. And it could be about a situation in your life, a person, um, an engagement that you have, a project you're creating. It's just like, is this really serving my highest good right now? And do I need to be engaging with it? And you know, you'll you'll get that feeling in your body of like, oh, this is draining, or like, no, this does really turn me on. It just maybe is a little challenging, <laughs> you know, and so on. Um, so that's really about you know turning on your desires and tuning in. I know it's it, this is a much bigger topic than I could cover in just a couple minutes because when you've been disconnected from your desires for a while, it can feel like you're really lost to your sense of self. Our desires and needs um, really are this compass that is our our soul guiding us into our divine mission, into our work, into our service, into the right relationships, and so. So our desires and needs are an innate, uh, healthy aspect of understanding ourselves fully uh, and living a vital life. And so if it hasn't been turned on for a while, it can really feel this like deep sense of frustration and dullness. Like, what do I really want? <laughs> what does that mean? And what does that feel like? Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to leave that there. Um, and we're going to go because I want to continue on to key number three, which is uh, speak up. So we just talked about, you know, key number one is you got to tap into your worthiness. Just innately, you are already worthy. And whatever you can do to attune yourself to that higher consciousness of worthiness, do it. Your meditation practice or just slowing down to tune into your womb or your heart, uh, whatever it might be for you. You know, key number two is like, what do I desire? Does this really serve me? You know, asking your womb that, your energy. And then number three is speak up. Next, it's like, okay, what do I need to do to take action to actually honor myself now? So that's when you need to activate the voice and have that courage and the strength and be in that energy of your masculine, be in the energy of like, this is important. And having that uh, assertiveness of like, this is is actually what I value. It's not a question. Like your needs and values aren't a question. Like, hey, do you think you could do this for, you know, do you think this would work out for you if you honored this boundary of mine? It's like, no, it's not a question and a value. It is, this is what I need right now. How can we work together to make that happen? Right. And so that would be like if you were working with someone intimately in your life. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, boundaries need to be spoken in our, our field, in our relationships in the world around us, but also boundaries are, we need to <clears throat> speak sacred boundaries, <clears throat> excuse me, and intentions around our thought patterns, because this is actually one of the biggest ways that we, <clears throat> the largest and most depleting ways, I should say that we, um, drain our power and our life force energy and live a life that is not in our highest alignment. It's really how we're talking to ourselves and the way we, uh, our perspectives. And so really being, uh, aware of what fear is coming up the most in your life and what worry, you know, what are those worries and fears and, and those limitations that you're putting on a dream or a vision or a desire, like what are those things that are just kind of like a shadow in your field? Because you give power to it. The reason it's still there is because you're giving power to it. You're feeding into it. You're continuing to think about it. You're worrying about it. 
right? And this, this depletes, this is a huge way that your power is depleting. Uh, and so you have to create sacred boundaries around that. And that you could be writing that on intention card, like I free myself from this worry or whatever it might be, or I make a vow to not give my power over to that anymore, or just literally reclaim your power. Or, um, you know, you could have this um, like counter thought if there's this really intense fear that you have, you create a counter thought that actually is empowering um, to it like for uh for example like i um you know deeply fear for um the safety safety of my children right and instead of feeding into that thought pattern when mo minute it pops up it would be like i trust I trust that my children are safe and that I'm safe and that we're going to be guided in really beautiful moments and situations and so on, you know, and so you, you create this kind of counter thought. And again, this, this, that's a boundary that's saying, I'm not engaging with that thought pattern. I'm engaging with this thought pattern, right? This is all that boundaries are. It's like not engaging, engaging how we go about creating those boundaries is quite an art form. And there's many ways to do it. But again, that's the essence is like not engaging with this, engaging with this. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. So how does this lead to freedom and vitality? So boundaries ultimately lead to freedom and vitality because you resource yourself properly. I'm going to say that again, you resource yourself properly. Like I was just saying, I'm going to reclaim my power and energy from that which was not serving me. And I'm going to channel my energy into that which gives me life force energy, that which uplifts me, that which brings joy. So you empower your life in this way through choosing to engage with people, with situations that actually serve your highest good. You let go of guilt for needing to say no, <laughs> which is a big one with setting boundaries is <laughs> Sometimes you can say them and set them and then afterwards you might feel, hold this guilt and shame around it. And um, again, that's really tapping into your self-worth of like, I'm worthy, I'm worth that, I'm worthy of receiving this boundary. So, and you respect, respectfully disengage with people and experiences that do not serve you in the moment, to your highest good and in the long run. So that in this way, you start creating a life that actually fills you up, okay? And so this is, um, this is your freedom, which I talked about in a video in this online space, the explanation of freedom and vitality and what that really means and why it's important. Uh, but you know, freedom really in essence is it's sovereignty. It's having your own inner authority, being completely self-owned. And that's this energy of expansion, not being weighed down by those shadows, those fears, those energies and engagements that actually don't serve you and feeling you don't feel trapped okay uh spiritually or energetically trapped um <clears throat> okay and part two of this is you know accessing vitality because when you're in divine alignment with your authentic self and aligned boundaries you are inevitably filled up with life force energy whatever you do gives you energy so then you kind of can visualize the uh from that beginning meditation that the energy those rivers flowing out they're flowing out to engagements to people to creative projects uh, to concepts to belief systems that are empowering right and the energy that's flowing back in is just a return flow of that which is uplifting to you so you have this cyclical energy flow happening where none of your energy is draining but you're fully engaged with life you are fully turned on your senses are alive you're connected to your relationships you are connected to your work to your purpose uh, to nature and it, all of that life force energy flows back to you because that's life it's regenerative and that is this vitality that we can tune into so whenever there's a connection to uh feeling dis disempowered or depleted or drained we have to really look at our energy flow and our boundaries and you know i have not perfected this i am constantly um, adjusting and you know that's the thing it's not about i guess getting 
perfect getting to a place where you're constantly at this place um, because life is so dynamic and we are changing it's about recognizing when we are drained when we are depleted and like ah okay what do i need to tune into what do i need to actually shift what do i need to change so i can shift into this uh regenerative energy flow in my body um and feel this deep sense of vitality and peace and joy um <clears throat> Yeah. So again, so important to recognize. I'm just going to wrap it up here because we are almost complete. Um, when setting your boundaries, it's again, just really thinking about where is my energy flowing that is draining me? Okay. And what do I need to do to call my energy back? It could be just like I reclaim my power back. It could just be more of an energetic thing, right? Sometimes it's more of like physical movement and you need to speak what you need. Things need to adjust in a relationship. You need to maybe even step out or create space. Okay. And then also thinking about your boundaries is, okay, that's not what I want to engage with. What do I want to engage with? Right. Healthy boundaries is also thinking about where do I want to put my life force energy? What do I want to focus on? and then honoring it like what do you need to do to honor that it might just be an energetic thing putting your focus on the more positive thoughts or it's maybe it's a more physical thing actually creating the structure for a healthy habit um or asking for more support from somebody so that you can have time and energy to do something that you love and so on Okay. So again these can just change in an absolute instant <laughs> your your boundaries. And I noticed that the most after becoming a mother, um, from the phase of being a maiden where life was just, I was just really had to focus on myself and, um, yeah, it was, I just had a lot more energy to, to give out to the world. And after being, um, a mother, it's so much shifted. I had to create a lot of different boundaries with my energy, with my time, how I work, uh, to, to be a mom and resource myself differently. Um, but so much can change also, you know, in beyond just shifting from being a mother, but even as a bleeding woman, uh, if you are still in that phase of bleeding, your boundaries are going to go change depending on the time of the month, depending on when you're ovulating to when you're bleeding, uh, your energy is completely different. What you want, what you desire and how you protect yourself is completely different around those times and recognizing that you're not crazy. Like <laughs> you just are different at different times of the month and need to shift and honor how, who you engage with, what you engage with, what activities you do and so on on um you know your boundaries can change depending on if it's a sunny day if it's a rainy day like <laughs> these can affect what you want to engage with and how much a uh, resource you have to give or to not give okay um it could change this is a big one too depending on how much sleep you have how well you are if you're feeling sick or not sick but sleep is a really big one as well okay so these are just some examples of you know just to be conscious of when things change in life and um, really being in that humble state to uh, vulnerable and humble state to look at yourself and to honor yourself and to make the necessary adjustments that you need in your life. So if you're really ready to access more of this freedom vitality this spring through reclaiming your power accessing your true desires and learning to actually speak your boundaries so you can truly create more of a life that's thriving and energized and abundant in this spring i'm actually inviting um I am opening up just four spots to a really unique mini offering. I usually don't offer too many mini <laughs> offerings, but I wanted to offer something this um, this spring, just over the next couple of weeks to really support you and really specific guidance on what you need to set boundaries in your life and how to reclaim your power um, as you're shifting out of this darkness, out of this winter and really coming into the sense of vitality and freedom this spring. Uh, so this is just going to be a uh, 
like a two session healing mentorship uh, to really give you a powerful energy reset so you can reconnect with your womb, reconnect with your vitality and really access your sovereignty. Um, again, it's going to be a really jam packed mini unique offering and I've never really done something like this before and I'm only opening it up to four women specifically to uh, yeah, really give you specific advice on what you need to access this level of boundaries in your life. And even if we work together before on boundaries, um, just giving specific guidance on this time of your life, where you're at, what's going on, and how to resource yourself. So it's going to be both deeply healing and a lot of guidance uh, for you moving forward. So just send me a DM if you want more details about that. Um, and otherwise, we are complete with today's discussion. Thank you all so much for being in the sacred, sacred space with me, connecting with boundaries. It's just such an absolute joy. I love this conversation and it's something that's so important uh, to your health to your spiritual health, to your vitality, to your sovereignty, and uh, would love to support you in really reclaiming this connection to your power. So sending you all again so much love. Have a beautiful rest of your weekend and send me a DM if you want to connect about this little mini offering. Mwah. Many blessings to you all. <laughs> Have a beautiful weekend.